Hello, I'm David DeCosmo. Welcome to ECTV Live. I'm joined today by Michelle Wheeler from the Lackawanna College Environmental Center. And I guess we ought to back up on this one, Michelle, because a lot of people know about Lackawanna College, and they know that it's right in downtown Scranton, and they have a lot of activities there, a lot of great programs there, very successful. And now they find out that there's a branch that's not downtown in the city, but that's key to your success. So tell us about the Environmental Center. How did it even get started? Sure, so Lackawanna College does have several branch locations. They're satellite campuses, so we have many of them. Ours is the Lackawanna College Environmental Education Center. We're located in Covington Township, which is um, just a short ride from downtown right up Route 307. And we've been out there for a little over 10 years, and we do a lot of environmental education for um, the whole community. So we have summer programs for the younger kids, summer day camps. We have public programs for all kinds of hot topics and environmental issues. We have um, hikes and walks. We have a mushroom walk that's always a lot of fun in the spring and the fall. And then we, of course, have all of our college level programming as well. And I think it's so great that a, an educational institution can, uh, and my goodness, we have, uh, we have an alert here. Wow, talk about instant news. <laughs> hey, that's, 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 I wonder, I hope we don't have to evacuate the place. Uh, the Environmental Center is something that is an educational facility, but it's been open to the public. And I think that's so great because oftentimes people think of our educational institution strictly as a place where you do go to sign up and get your courses and get your degrees. And obviously that's very important at Lackawanna College. Yep. But to see it open for various public events is just an icing on the cake. Now, as a matter of fact, we'll be talking about a lot of the programs that are offered throughout the year, that have been this year, that will be next year at the center. But you will get a chance to go there because one of the focuses of today's program is the fact that there is an open house coming up. So let's focus on that for just a second. Sure, so our open house um, will be November 16th from 9 a.m. to noon. That actually follows Lackawanna College as a whole, having open house that day for all of our campuses. So, um, you know, if you're in Hazleton or um, Lake Regent, we have satellite campuses over there as well. There's one in Tawanda. So the open house follows Lackawanna College at main campus and all of those satellite centers. Um, and we will be having one as well at the Environmental Education Center. We will be talking about two of our um, college level programming. Um, we have a conservation and natural resource certificate um, which is a total of five classes, and that um, enables students to be job ready as a DCNR park ranger. So it's kind of a really unique um, niche program that we've developed where they take five field biology courses, and then um, that satisfies the 15 credits of natural science that they need to become a DCNR park ranger to take the civil service test. And then we encourage our students to also take the um, police academy in addition to that. So when they to... are graduate, it's two separate programs they would apply for and then complete. But they take the one semester <coughs> certificate right. program at the Environmental Education Center. Again, that's in Covington. And then they could take the police academy um, in either Hazleton or the Scranton campus. And, and the uh, college has been well known for its police program yes. for some time now. Correct. Uh, turning out a lot of officers that now serve in local communities and many have gone on to uh, other law enforcement agencies including Pennsylvania State Police. But it's interesting that when people think about law enforcement uh, they tend to think about those urban police right. settings and they don't realize there's a whole field of uh, uh, the, the park rangers, uh, there's the um, Fish and Boat Commission, right, game commission which all waterway. have their own, in effect, law enforcement officers. Correct. Yeah. So this, these courses, especially combined, right. would be ideal for someone looking to those settings. 
Absolutely. So that was our goal for that program. The second program that we'll be talking about that day is our brand new sustainable leadership certificate. Um, it is completely online, so anyone can take it anywhere. You don't just have to be a Northeast PA resident and commute to class. You would have internet access and take it from your home computer. Um, and that is also five classes. And what that program does is it is designed to um, increase your knowledge of sustainability um, in almost any industry. So for me, sustainability is not just about green. A lot of times when we think green and sustainability, you connect those two, yeah. we think yeah. about recycling and protecting the planet and you know um, saving trees and, and things of that nature. For me, sustainability incorporates um, three aspects. Yes, the planet and the environment is a huge part of that, but another part of it is um, a healthy society. So how we interact with one another, um, jobs, all of that is society, um, our health. And then the third part of sustainability would be the economy, which again, jobs fit into that, which yeah. of course all three of these overlap because we're talking about environment and education and um, social aspects and then the economy. So in order, in our perspective to be sustainable, you need to have a strong, clean, healthy environment. You have to have a strong, clean, healthy society, and you need to have a strong, clean, healthy economy as well. So in the Sustainable Leadership Program, that's designed for um, anyone who's interested in um, adding knowledge in this, the area of sustainability. And, and again, that is done strictly online? It's an online program, correct. And yeah. how does one get involved with that? Um, you would contact us at the center, and we could. Um, you'd have to apply to Lackawanna College, just like any of our other programs. Get you accepted. Well, you're still a student. You're in that still regard. a student, absolutely. Right. You just take your classes online instead of in person, and that's that's. Um, a lot of schools are doing that now. We have several other online huh. options, and there's a lot of courses that you can take online and in class, or if you were even a traditional student, there's a lot of students nowadays that are taking some classes online and some some in, in the classroom. So. Do you wind up getting a lot of students that are sort of based at, the, for instance, the Scranton uh, school buildings, and then they wind up coming out to the center as well? We do have some of that. Um, sometimes it's a student that has uh, a degree that they're seeking at main campus, and then they just take a, a course at our center. Um, but we also partner with our main campus, and um, we have our students come out to our center for labs. So they'll use, oh, I forgot to mention when we were talking about the center, some of the other great things that we, we have out there. So we have the 211 acres and the Marsh Machine, which is our um, waste treatment facility. A Marsh Machine? Marsh Machine. So that's, what is a Marsh Machine? Uh, we, so at the Environmental Education Center, we are not connected to a sewer or a septic system. We have all of our waste from the building, whether it's the toilets or the sinks, goes right out into a greenhouse that's filled with um, hydrophytic plants, which means plants oh. that like water. And we use natural processes to clean all of the wastewater. And it then does, you use it for, for the plant it, growth. It, yep, so the plants grow in there. And then we uh, let it run through an ultraviolet light, which mutates the DNA within the, uh, within the water. And then all of that gets reused in the toilets for so, flushing. So this is a year-round yes. operation? Yep. Yeah, so the, the marsh machine is, is the only way we clean all of our wastewater. And, and what so, kind of plants are you able to produce? Um, we, oh, so it's not for food production or plant okay. production. These plants are in there permanently. They're part of the system. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah. So they're, they're right into the ground and the gravel in on the floor of the, the greenhouse. That's got to be a one of a kind in the area. There's a couple in Pennsylvania. I'm not sure how close the next closest one is, but um, we have our main campus students and our traditional students come out there and they investigate the building for all of those really great unique features as well. You know, when they're taking environmental science and they're talking about water quality, they'll come out, they'll do water chemistry and stuff in the greenhouse. Um, or when they're taking one of their biology classes that's focusing on botany, they can come out and explore the 211 acres and, you know, use the whole facility as a living laboratory. So. That, that's, that's fantastic. Yeah. And uh, we've talked on previous programs about the value of uh, the hands-on learning, yes. uh, which brings us back to the, what you said at the very beginning. 
that while you do have college courses there, we've mm -hmm. just talked about uh, two of them, that additionally your facilities are opened up to the public for various uh, activities, some of which include education for high school level students and even below, is it yes? Correct, yep. High school students all the way down to uh, three-year-olds and then all the way up to senior citizens. All right, now what can they do, especially when they think about a three-year-old? What can you do at an environmental center with a three-year-old? We have what's called an early explorers program designed for ages three to six. Um, that starts every spring and every fall, so right now we're right in the middle of it. Um, however, we do have, I think we have one more class left. Um, on November 18th, we have animal aerobics, and then on November 2nd, we have animals in winter. Wait a minute now, animal aerobics? Yeah. <laughs> okay, you're gonna have to explain this one. So they get to, um, we talk about movement and animals and how all, not all animals, so we're talking preschool level still, right? right? right. So, um, you know, frogs hop, birds fly, they flap their wings. So it's a very interactive program with the kids. We read a story, we talk about animal movement, and then they actually have to make those movements with us. So we have all the preschoolers hop around so, yeah, and then yeah. they'll flap and pretend like they they're flying. They duplicate the, the yeah, animal's yeah. movements. They slither like a snake and it's it's a lot of fun, especially for that age, so. And how about uh, high school level? You have courses there as well? Um, during the high school, we, for the high school kiddos, we try to do a um, dual enrollment program, which usually runs in the summertime. So we'll pick one of our college level programs or a college course, and we'll specifically reach out to the high school students and let them know that this is a 100 level biology or geology or something like that, and they can get their feet wet with um, trying college level courses. And it actually, when they're done, they will um, have already three credits of, of um, college under their belt when they graduate. You indicated as well that you have uh, trails we do. Uh, at, at the uh, center. Um, are those things that are strictly limited to student use? No, they are open to the public from um, dawn until dusk. Um, there's about five miles, five trails of five miles total on our 211 acres that are open to the public. And you can bring your dog. You just have to keep him on a leash and clean up after him. But we love the puppies. So we're dog friendly and family friendly and open to the public. A lot of people taking advantage of that? We do have a few people, yeah. Yep. It's, it's uh, frequently we have guests on that uh, talk about places right in our own immediate area that I consider to their treasures, sometimes unknown. Yes. To a lot of people, and I would consider this center to be one. As I recall, uh, did you not start on some township land? Correct. We did start, we actually started in like 2004 in the basement at Main Campus. Not in the basement, but R right at in town? Main Campus, yes. We okay. started at Main yeah. Campus. And then... Well, you know, that's good, but I guess when you're talking about especially environmental issues, yeah you're sort of limited right. to how much you can do in-house, so to speak. Right. So you took the next move. Right, and then we ended up um, in Covington Township, which we're still in Covington Township now, but we ended up at their Moffat Estate, which is um, beautiful, well-manicured, 42-acre uh, um, uh, township park. Right, as a matter of fact, I, I, I've, I've uh, been there with my family. They do a little Christmas uh, type program and uh, and the estate there uh, does stem from a family that was very involved in local industry way back and and fortunately it's one of those things that's been passed down to the public Correct. so it's still usable and and that uh, but you began having courses there which really was the school's first venture out of the building downtown so to speak and into the field for the environmental center. Right, right. Yeah, yeah, because we've got those other campuses. But yeah, so that was our first um, transition away from main campus. We were there for a good number of years. We had a beautiful, we were in the white caretakers um, facility, right. and we just kind of outgrew the space, which is um, sad and great at the same time. And we, at the same time, had um, some land donated from the McKenzie family. So, 
that is where the college decided to build our brand new LEED certified facility, which we actually moved into in 2014. So we've been at the new place since 2014. We've got tons of room now, lots of land, lots of space in the building. Um, so many really there cool classroom green... space there, actual classroom space there? Yes, yep. The classroom space is there as well. It's kind of a large multi-purpose room that was designed to be able to fit everything. So it's classrooms can be broken up into two classrooms actually, um, but then in the summertime it works for our summer day camps. We rent the facility out so we've had baby showers, anniversaries uh -huh. and stuff like that during nights and weekends. Um, and we also have birthday parties for the kids so we get that on nights and weekends as well. You can um, schedule one hour of a fun nature program and then you get the building use as well so huh. uh, that can be a lot of fun where we'll have you know a bunch of seven-year-olds or ten-year-olds and we're digging in the pond for um, you know amphibians or tad you know tadpoles macroinvertebrates all that kind of stuff and what about you have a summer camp program yeah and that's also been going I guess since before the current campus Yes. Uh, there got started. We've been doing the summer camp since about 05 or 06. And the first year when we were located in Scranton, we actually had the camp at Nayog Park. So we've been doing them for a long time. And then, of course, we transferred to the Moffat Estate, and now we're at our location in, um, on Mackenzie Road. Now, uh, the summer programs, I'm sure, are busy, and, and, uh, and that's great. What about you know, we're, now we're hitting the winter season, and I would think that other than those specialty programs uh, for the people perhaps training to be, you know, uh, DCNR uh, rangers and such, yeah. there wouldn't be too much you could do out there. We love wintertime just as much as we love spring and summer, um, and of course the fall. So one of our things that we like to do in the winter is we have a, um, a winter uh, nature camp and it's that break right after Christmas, but before um, New Year's. And uh, this year it'll be a two-day camp. It is going to be December seventh and dis oh, I'm sorry, December twenty seventh and December twenty eighth. Um, so in the winter time, we like to do a lot of like winter experiments, like how quickly will snow free, uh, water freeze. Um, last year, the kiddos did a homemade bowling ball, frozen bowling ball. Uh game um, in like the the parking lot where they had taken two liter bottles and filled them the day before and then they froze them outside and then they took a balloon filled it with water let that freeze and then they set them up as pins and like bowled with them so we do a lot of fun silly stuff like that um, there's of course some inside play because they need to warm up a bit and sure. they make snacks um, I think one year they had built a fire in the winter, which the kids always think is really silly and Do you fun. have a lake there or a pond area? We don't have an official lake or pond. We do have like a um, retention pond um, that is teeming with life, and we have a marsh and a stream. So our natural is the stream in the marsh, and then our man-made is the retention pond. Part of your uh, educational program there, be it for college students or or be it for you know students from uh, k through uh, actually pre-k through 12 involves testing of the water that you, you have around there yeah um, recently had a guest on from the lacwax uh, sanctuary yeah mm -hmm. and um, we talked about the testing that goes on there in in their case they have a glacier formed lake right and between that water testing and just other observations on their property they have well they've got evidence of the climate change that everybody's been talking about you know it's always controversial to mention that but I don't think there's any doubt there's been a change you can debate all you want as to what causes and what factors go into making this is it natural is man contributing to it during all the testing at your educational center are you seeing any trends as to what may be happening from our, our total climate conditioning? Um, I can't say that that's what we're testing for. Um, we're more testing for like runoff and phosphates and nitrogen and stuff like that that would be more contributed to um, like agriculture use and stuff. Mm -hmm. So I can't say that uh, um, anything that we've directly been testing for would 
would have any definitive. Well, on the other hand, though, have you seen changes over the past few years in those kind of test results? Not too much. It's been pretty... Um, pretty standard? Pretty standard, and we've got beautiful country out there, so our parameters are, are right on where they should be for a clean and healthy environment. So, mm -hmm. so we're, we're finding good results, and yeah. So. Uh, when the younger kids get out there, now apparently, uh, how about the winter? Is that limited age-wise, the, the camp that uh, you're talking about? Yes. Yeah, so for the winter camp, we are gearing that one for kiddos that are 5 to 11 years old. Okay. It's still a very young group, and I'm kind of wondering how much they appreciate I understand they would appreciate looking at the animals and things like that. Yeah. But when it comes to testing water, <laughs> are they into that? <laughs> uh, we usually don't test the water quality with um, with the winter camp. We do that a lot with our summer camps. Okay. The summer camps are are built a little different, where we have a camp for five and six year olds, a camp for seven and eight year olds. So like every two two-year gap in age is a different camp level. So in the summertime, we have a camp for 11, 12, and 13-year-olds, and that one we do our water quality testing with. And um, I find that that age fits really well with, okay. with the, the chemical testing and stuff. Every time we've had you in to visit us here, uh, it seems you've been adding programs uh, to the schedule at the center, yes. and it is, in fact, a year-round operation now, obviously. Yep. Um, what are you looking for in terms of future development there? What would you like to see happen? Uh, additional courses, and if so, what kind? Uh, for what ages? Uh, right now, we're in the process of looking into a few more certificate-level college courses, and um, they're still super in the works, so I can't tell you just yet. Okay, but now the certificate level programs are valuable programs. They don't obviously entail quite as much time as going for a, you know, a, a three credit course of some sort. Right, so the, the certificate programs that I'm talking about are four credit college courses. Oh, you do get, all right. You do, okay. but you're right in that they don't take quite as much time. So um, a traditional associate's degree, of course, is usually two years. A bachelor right. degree, which Lackawanna also offers, is a four year program. And f so far, our certificate programs that we've developed, the um, Conservation Natural Resource Certificate is only one semester. So it's all 16 credits. You start in the fall, and you're done by, by Christmas time. It's one fall semester. Now, the Sustainable Leadership Program is um, also 16 credits, but it's designed to be um, attainable for a working professional. So that program is actually one year long. So it's still only five courses, but you only take one course at mm -hmm. a time. So you would start in the fall, take a course, um, first half of the semester, a second course, the other half of the semester, an intercession course, two courses in the spring, and then um, actually kind of double up that last little bit of okay. spring, but it's an extra one credit course, so it's not too heavy of a workload for, for somebody that might be trying to juggle a full-time job, maybe a family, and, and trying to get an extra um, you know, certificate or credential under their belt for the resume. Well, that, that actually takes us to the, to the other level I wanted to ask about, which is our seniors, because now, uh, w again, another guest talked about how the, uh, uh, the activities and the goals at the uh, senior centers have changed now because the population is changing so right. much and people are living longer. They're encouraging people to do more in terms of education. So how about adult education? How about even senior education? Yeah, so we have had a few seniors that have joined us for um, dendrology um, course, specifically for that course. So well, they didn't um, apply to be a full-time student, but they came and just took one of our college programs. Um, they still had to apply and go through the process and stuff. But So we've had um, seniors join us just for like one college level course. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm sure at main campus there might be, you know, uh, you know, seniors yeah. enrolled full time even. Um, 
but then we have seniors join us all the time for just our nature walks and talks. Yeah, your setting those, is perfect for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we have a mushroom walk. That seems to be a really big hit. That's already passed for this fall, but, but that would be the type of program that they would register for. It's only $5. It's about an hour and a half. Um, it's very educational, but it's also, um, you know, that walk that's included. And right. we're picking mushrooms, so it's that hands-on learning, not just sitting in the classroom where we're Picking discussing. the right kind of mushrooms, yes. I'm gathering. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but also what, what's, you know, the right kind to pick, what's edible, um, but how to harvest them sustainably. So. Right, right. So. Well, uh, once again, uh, before we close, you're going to have a chance to Go out to the center and have a look around for open house. So one more time on the open house date it's time. It's Saturday, November 16th, and it's from 9 to noon. And if anyone has any questions about any of the programs we've mm -hmm. talked about, uh, you just happen to have a listing here. Uh, I can't read the number backwards because uh, I'm looking at the back of you. <laughs> yeah, 570-842-1506. All right, so there's a place to get information. Uh, I'm, I'm sure you'd like to go to the open house there. If it doesn't fit your schedule, may I encourage you to take a, a, a drive out to the center and get on one of the, the trails there, take a look around and see what you have right in your own area that uh, can be very enjoyable. Michelle Wheeler, thank you so much. Thank you for, for having joining me. us. Glad to have you back. I'm uh, also extending my thanks to Mark McGlory, who's the guy that's keeping us in focus here. I'm David DeCosmo for ECTV Live. Till we see you again next time, here's hoping all your news is good.